On the technology side of things, you obviously need a scanning tool of some sorts. I mean, you can do vulnerability management manually, uh, but realistically, you only do that if you really, really hate Junior, because it means that you know going to a machine, checking registry settings manually, etc. Um, e even the most dedicated Junior is probably going to end up potentially going postal at some stage if you do that. So some sort of scanning tool is probably a good idea, and of course an asset database. Uh, the asset database, as in knowing what you should be scanning, uh, is good. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And some sort of way of ticketing. And the ticketing, I know it sounds like a, a little bit of a, a, a do moment as well, but again, it goes towards the remediation. If you go to a team and say, can you fix this, please, and you don't relate it to a ticket, then you lose track of it. It doesn't get remediated, so nobody knows that it should have been fixed. Etc. So it's just easier to have some sort of ticketing system to uh, keep track of all of that. One of the things that we find with the technology that usually goes wrong in many an organisation is the the access that the scanning engines have, or the placement of the scanning engines. Um, we've had organisations where we've reviewed their vulnerability program and. All of these scans say that every server has port 21, 23, 80, 443, and I don't know, 80, 80 open. And of course, that shows you almost no vulnerabilities, which is great. The problem is, is that maybe it's behind a firewall. So in fact, what you're seeing is just a scanned firewall 256 times, as opposed to devices that are behind that. Maybe there weren't uh, the correct rules on the firewalls. Same thing goes with placement. Now we've, we've had people scan subnets that just aren't actually accessible by the scan engine. So uh, let's say, for example, something silly. Um, the scan engine is on a 192 subnet, and they're trying to scan a 10 subnet, which is not routable from the 192 subnet. So strangely enough, they get no results and no vulnerabilities. The other one that we get a lot is um, Authentic, you know, authenticated scans versus unauthenticated scans. So in an unauthenticated scan, you'll get some you know, missing patches information. So we get people saying, hey, we only have these few patches missing. And then when you dig a little bit further, it turns out that they haven't got an authenticated scan, which actually logs onto the machine, goes and checks the registries, goes and checks a whole bunch of other things, and then comes back with the information on the patches. So what they're seeing is, is kind of a, a little bit of a one-eyed picture. So access and placement is a technology uh, issue that uh, most organizations need to overcome. And it's just a matter of planning your deployments. 